fellow users of the internet. So tonight I am coming to you from the bowels of Kawasaki. And as you can tell from my unusually dapper attire, I am coming to you from straight after work. Tonight I'm coming to you from an overpass that I spotted not too long ago uh, when I was going for a walk one afternoon and I thought maybe this would make a nice long exposure shot. So I'm just sitting here waiting for the timing to match up. The problem I have here is that I need the cars to be moving and I would like a train to be going past as well. But at the same time, I'm on a pedestrian overpass, so I gotta make sure that no one is walking past me at the time because any small movement on this overpass causes massive shaking and that's gonna cause a soft blurry photo. So timing needs to be precise. So I'm gonna wait. And while I'm waiting, I guess I'll talk to you people. You people? What does that mean? Longtime viewers of my Instagram will know that along with macro photography, I also really enjoy long exposure photography. So I guess while I'm waiting, I can kind of give you some tips or tell you a little bit about what I think makes a good long exposure shot and what exactly you're going to need to achieve a good long exposure shot. Just don't know luck on the timing. Gotta keep waiting. When it comes to long exposure photography, the gear is quite simple. Uh, at night, all you're going to need is a tripod, a camera, and it really helps to have a remote trigger. You don't necessarily need a remote trigger, but without one, it's going to be a little bit difficult because you'll have to set a two second timer on your camera. The reason why you'll need a two second timer is because when you press the shutter, you're going to shake the camera and this small shake is going to be picked up by the sensor and it's going to give you a soft or blurry image. So I strongly recommend getting a super cheap remote trigger. They're only about $20. You don't have to get a name brand one. So just go out and get one of those. It's going to really improve your long exposure photography. Oh yeah, and patience. You need an absolutely unbelievably large amount of patience. But when it comes to long exposure photography, gear alone isn't enough. Now, I've seen a lot of long exposure photography on the web and some of it's good and some of it is eh, less than good. So what I find makes a good long exposure photo is layers. It's good to have interest in the foreground, it's good to have interest in the middle ground, and ideally you want some interest in the background as well. Now the photo I'm taking today is not exactly the world's most stunning photo, but it's the best I got right now, so sometimes you gotta deal with what you get. But in the particular photo I'm taking, the foreground interest is going to be the cars going by, the middle interest is going to be the train tracks with the train going by, and the background interest is going to be the moon in the sky. So those are the three elements I'm using in this photo to hopefully make it interesting. It's also a really good idea to take a few test shots before you go for the final shot. You want to make sure that you've got the correct shutter speed, the best aperture, and that your ISO is correct. If the light is changing, then this might change from shot to shot, but you want to find a nice middle ground. With my particular photo, I've gone with an exposure of 8 seconds, an aperture of f10, and an ISO of 100 because I want to get my shutter speed as long as possible without overexposing. So this will vary from photo to photo, so take some test shots and find out which one is the best for your particular setting. After about 40 minutes of waiting, I'm finally confident that I got the shot I came here for. So thank you very much for watching. If you like what you've seen here today, then, you know, do whatever people do when they like stuff. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your grandma, tell your grandpa, tell your neighbor, tell all your cousins, I guess? Mm, I'm bad at outros. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you late. Well, I won't see you. You will hopefully see me later. I can't see you. Don't cover your camera. I can't see you. God, I'm weird.